You're listening to Minor Talk On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with Minor Talk by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. All right, Minor Talk is live. Along with Zé Galindo, Alberto Arreta, I'm Adrian Bratis. Man, what a bad loss. That's where I'm starting on uh, tonight's show. FIU defeats UTEP 72-68. to Let's run down the big numbers that are just going to be painful for everybody to hear but are necessary to start off this one. Uh, number one, Miners are 0-5 on the road. Miners collapsed in this game. They led uh, for all but the final minute of this game. They, they had the lead They're, this entire matchup. And um, if you're a UTEP fan, you understand frustration, right? I mean, <laughs> UTEP fans are not new to anything frustrating, right? But when you watch the Miners and how they collapsed in the final minute of this game, uh, it just reaffirms that, man, you know, being a UTEP fan is definitely one of those difficult things. Uh, Miners led for over 37 minutes of this game. They led with 16. They led by 16 points with under nine minutes to go in this matchup, and they allowed Florida International to go on a 28 to eight run en route to a come from behind win. The Panthers swept this week. They beat New Mexico State earlier in the week, almost by 10. And then uh, they beat the Miners today in a come-from-behind victory. I, I'll give FIU credit for coming back in this one, but this is on UTEP for falling in this one. I, I'm not sugarcoating it whatsoever. The Miners lost this matchup right here. And for what it's worth, UTEP had 24 turnovers in their road matchup against FIU last year. But they actually won. They squeezed past, and they got a victory. The, the, the two games, this year's game and last year's game, were very similar. You heard about it from Joe Golding. Last year's team was just able to pull off the victory. This year's team uh, totaled 25 turnovers on the road. The press rattled them in a big way. And the Miners, they still shot 59% from the field. They shot 57, an exceptional 57% from three-point land, and they still lose today because of those uh, 25 turnovers. Because the Panthers scored 28 points off the 25 turnovers right there, they shot 41% from beyond the arc, and they made three-pointers in the second half, including five made threes, uh, three from Hawkins alone. Uh, No excuse whatsoever. I'm very disappointed in the Miners and how they lost this game. I thought it was their first road win, no doubt about it, and yet the Miners crumble in the final minute to Florida International. Zay, where do we even start with this one? How do we even begin to dissect what happened? Because for the majority of it, we liked it. We were all thinking, man, you know, UTEP's up, just close out the game. Distance yourself. Kill Florida International the way that they were playing and up sit by 16 points with under 10 minutes to go. Yet the Miners fall in this one, their fifth road loss of the season, and fans are left scratching their heads and wondering, well, what happened? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know where to start about this game because, you know, like you said, we were enjoying this, we we're watching this, we we're saying, hey, the freshmen are playing well, right? You know, even the veterans are playing well. Tay Hardy was having a great game up until the final maybe five, six minutes, and then it all just fell apart. The turnovers. We saw what has plagued UTEP basketball for the last two years. It's the turnovers, them getting into scoring droughts, them allowing teams to go on these big-time runs and not having any type of response. And uh, that was just really magnified today in their loss. So the bottom line was UTEP had an opportunity to uh, call a timeout late in the game. Some could argue you should call Call a timeout late in that game and call and draw up the play. Uh, instead, the Miners let the Panthers score, so they went up seventy to sixty-eight. It was a, it was a just a one bucket game. Miners go down the floor and they turn the ball over themselves. Uh, Zid Powell actually turned the ball over alone. Arturo Dean, who's been around the block, he's been around Conference USA for a while. He uh, had the steal. They dunked the ball in transition with just a second left. And that was all she wrote. That was how this game ended in the final possessions. Florida International was the tougher team. And Alberto, that's where we start this one off. Uh, just the Miners unable to close it out despite leading this one for the majority. Forget the majority. They led the entire game minus the last minute. How do you even explain this loss for the Miners? I think you really can't. I think that 
some of the veterans really let the team down. You know, you look at stat sheets and, and it speaks for itself. You know, a lot of guys that have experience at the D1 level and let alone the D1 level they have experience on this team. They they just not are not performing to the standard that I know they can perform to. And, and it reflects on the stat sheet and reflects on on, uh, on the court. It, it's from really horrible basketball. They played uh, well up until about, what, six minutes left in the game, eight minutes yeah, left in the game. Yeah, that's right. That's about you, right. You can't have it. You know, three turnovers in the last three minutes, five turnovers in the last five minutes, a scoring drought of three minutes and 29 seconds. To end. It's just like you can't have stuff like that if you want to win the game, and that's why you lost. So, yeah, you did a lot of things well today, like shoot the three and, you know, um, well, uh, shoot the three. And uh, you did a lot of things bad, and that's why you lost. So, yeah, I hope they, they, they learn and move on, and, and, and there's nothing they can do now. But we were saying you just need to get hot at the end. Yeah, and but, games. I mean, hey, look, Miners did not – forget getting hot at the end, Alberto, because the Miners could not even clamp down defensively and hold Florida International. Like, it's one thing for you to go on the scoring drought. It's the other thing for you to go with the turnovers. But if you're not playing defense on the other side and having that kind of urgency, then that's where I'm knocking the team a little bit. I, that's effort right there, Zay. Yeah, we saw this in, in losses against New Mexico State when, when UTEP was losing. They're losing they're down on the road to a rival and they need to get they need to put together buckets and stops and they could not put together stops. Whenever it felt like, you know, UTEP had some momentum, they were giving up buckets on the other end, and that's what we saw today, right? Towards the end, it felt like FIU was getting anything they wanted on, on when they were coming down onto their side of the court, which is frustrating for a team that, you know, ever since Joe Golding has gotten here, they've prided themselves on defending the basketball well. Yeah, good point. Hey, our telephone number, 915-505-6009. If you're frustrated, if you want to talk about it with us, we'd love to hear from you. 915 505 009. Twitter and X is blowing up right now. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, also want to mention we're presented by the Oscar Arietta Agency. Hey, uh, Oscar Arietta, he was actually at the UTEP women's basketball game today. We'll get to that uh, matchup later on. Another loss to talk about from the UTEP basketball squad, but on the women's side today, we'll, we'll get uh, reactions from Zay and Alberto, who are both at the game and uh, working it for us as well, and, and Alberto doing the stuff for ESPN Plus as well. Uh, we'll talk about about that coming up. The Oscar at the agency can help out when it comes to your home, your auto, your life insurance, or even your business commercial insurance needs. In fact, if you are stressing about your insurance and what you're paying on a monthly basis, Call the Oscar ID at the agency today. They can actually do a policy review on what you're currently spending right now. They can see if the, you could save some bucks with them. And they can even help out when it comes to uh, bundling your insurance, wh- whether it's your home and your auto insurance. Trust the local experts. It's the Oscar ID at the agency uh, here on Minor Tuck, the presenting sponsor here on Minor Tuck. Our telephone number, 915-505-6009 to get into the program. 600 ESPN will pass also on Twitter and X. Let's go over to uh, what's coming in right now. This is coming in from my pickaxe 915 Another great game, or no, he said another game, another bad loss. Another loss on the road. How does a team turn it over 25 times? That's just a, bas- a bad basketball team. I'm still out on Joe Golding. Hashtag Minor Talk. This is coming in from Aaron Peterson. Probably one of the better games the Miners have played since November, and they still find a way to lose. God gives his greatest challenges to Miner fans. Hashtag Miner Talk. Pinky checks into this. We are not used to this type of UTEP. Hashtag Miner Talk. Sal, he checks in. Uh, UTEP Miner fans, how are you feeling after this one? It's a safe space. Um, Snappy Trade says that he's uh, no bueno. Herman Flores says, I just don't care anymore. I'm looking forward to football season and Scotty Walden's first season. Ryan Guzman says he's out. Felipe Candelaria Jr. says that I'm still hopeful, but we... Uh, don't have a very good defensive team, in my opinion. That's coming in from Felipe Candelaria Jr. Also uh, coming in, this is Chi Town Minor. Crazy to take a step back and realize how far this program has fallen. Passed over by the Mountain West decades ago. Now left behind while even Rice moves on to better conferences. Now 0-2 in a week's Conference USA that was 8-12 and against WAC teams. The conference that we left thinking uh, it was a step up. Hashtag Minor Talk. Uh, good point there, Chi Town Minor. I really like that. Javier Ramirez, currently in a toxic relationship with the UTEP Miners. Travis Fortune, 
Zid seems to disappear for several minutes at a time. Shameful for a hyped up player with so much experience. Hashtag minor talk. Zay, we were talking about this a little bit, right? Like we were saying at his best, Zid Powell is one of your more powerful scorers on offense. Uh, but yeah, there are times where if when you ding him, like when you're asking uh, the question, what is his weakness? What is Zid Powell's weakness? I think one of Zid Powell's weaknesses is the fact that you can watch in certain stretches and forget that he's even on the floor because of the lack of impact that he makes. Uh, and then when you remember that he's on the floor, maybe he's turning the ball over. So that would be uh, his weaknesses that I would highlight right now. If you if you talk about his strengths being that he can attack the basket, that he can really get to the hoop, that he can make his free throws, sure. But the weaknesses that you can uh, talk about, and they are glaring at times, it's decision-making – and it's also urgency at times, whether it's defense or offensively. If he's not getting the ball a lot, he lacks a little bit of urgency. Yeah, and you know we saw that, especially in the second half. I mean, Zit Powell, he didn't play much. You know, obviously he did not play a lot in the second half. And when he was on the floor, if I'm not mistaken, UTEP was like minus twelve, minus thirteen, and it was just frustrating to watch at times when when UTEP needed that bucket. You bring in a guy like Zit Powell in the off season. You're 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 hoping that he will you. You know, get you uh, up some some points when you need them. When you're going through these droughts that we saw the past couple of years, you go out and this is supposed to be your big time transfer, and he has disappeared these past couple of games. And I don't understand why. And you know, the game that I always reflect back to is the Wyoming game in the second half when they needed a leader, when they needed someone to close out the game. Alberto, it just forget the leader. They just needed somebody to close out the game. They were already ahead. They already had the lead. How do they falter in that game? How do they falter now? Like, he had uh, the stability in that game at home against a far better team. Wyoming's a far better team than Florida International. And they had a, uh, you know, I guess a slimmer lead than they did in this matchup right here. Yet, it just was two different endings. Like, that one, I loved how they finished it off. They got to the free, uh, free throw line, they hit a lot of free throws, and they closed out the game that way. And it was just, it was maybe a boring, but it was a methodical way to close out the game. And then this one, it's turnovers left and right. It's it's not getting to the basket. It's not drawing the fouls. So it's far opposite games, and I just can't understand this team for the life of me. I mean, they beat some of the better teams at home, like Wyoming, yet you lose to the worst teams in Conference USA, like Florida International. It's been four years since UTEP lost to for, uh, Florida International at home or away. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's difficult to to realize what's wrong with this team. I mean, like you were saying, at that Wyoming game in the second half, Zid Powell went off. You know, we needed someone to step up, and they stepped up. Uh, Zid Powell stepped up. But in, in this game, I think that uh, in the second half, the turnovers, like I was asking you, who do you turn to at this point? You know, when you keep turning the ball over, who are you going to turn to? Who's your guy? Zid Powell, he played 16 minutes. You know, he had four turnovers and three fouls. Like, you're not going to go to him. And a lot of the guys, especially the veterans, who you say, oh, well, you know, you turn to Tay or you turn to, to, to Kevin Kalu or, or, or you know, obviously not to Kalu. You're, a lot of people are out. But you turn to Tay, five turnovers on his hand. Uh, Calvin Solomon, one turnover. But he didn't play the best, the best basketball. I think Calvin Solomon still has a lot left on the table. So it's just they need people to step up, and, and no one is stepping up. And everyone's leaving a lot of uh, points on the board, and uh, – it's not it's not it's not pretty to watch. Uh nine one five Sun City Caper sends us this. Joe Golding needs to stop with his crap excuses and answer as to why he wouldn't take out uh Trey Horton. Absolutely disgraceful coaching by Coach Joe Golding. Uh Zay, how would you answer that one right there? Trey Horton being subbed out, I think around the six minute mark. Um, you know, the miners obviously led by sixteen at the eight minute mark. So what what how do you see that one right there? Yeah, it's pretty frustrating to see. You know, we, we it was working. It was working. Trey Horton, like uh, John Teicher said, he was playing with a lot of poise for a freshman. He was handling the press very well. He was getting good and efficient shots for the minors. And, you know, it was getting to the point where, hey, FIU realized we can't just leave this guy open, right? We're going to have to exactly. guard him. And, and that helps with, uh, you know, a lot of other things, spacing, you know, in particular. And I felt at the end of the game, UTEP was lacking that spacing that, you know, that, that – 
gave them opportunities to get to the rim. Hey, uh, in his three seasons at UTEP, Joe Golding is 10-21 and 21 on the road. Okay, That's his road record right there. So he's only winning a third of his road games. Less than a third, actually, if you want to really be, uh, you know, uh, I guess specific about it, uh, but yeah, tw- ten and twenty-one over his three seasons, and that includes seven and six, a winning road season in year one. But of course, that's with strong players: Sule Boom, Keontae Kennedy, Titus Verhoeven. I mean, they had some solid players that first year. L- uh, last year, three and ten on the road. This year, to start off, zero and five. So there you go. Let's uh, go to the phone lines right now: nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. Later on, we'll get to our hot hand of the game, brought to you by Win. Supply El Paso and our player of the game brought to you by uh, Timothy Cantrell. But let's go to the phones right now. It's Robert first on the phone lines. Robert, what's up, man? Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, we're doing all right, Robert. What's going on? A little disappointed, like always, when it comes to the Utah basketball team. It's kind of embarrassing. You're up by 16 points with eight minutes and change to go, and you only score six points that final eight minutes to go in the game. It's sad when you have veteran leadership as T. Hardy, Zip Powell. And they're turning the ball over the last three minutes of the game. If I was the coach, I would even play them. I would just go with the freshmen. They show more poise and just go with them. This is just embarrassing. As of now, I'm already out of Goldie. He's a nice guy, but nice doesn't get you anywhere in life. We need results. That's just my um, opinion when it comes to this. Yeah, and I think, Robert, to be honest with you, the one thing that you would ding Coach Golding on, I guess even from year one, is you want to see that splash recruit. And I think that you look at some of these guys who are your veterans and who they try to develop within the system, they might not have been the guys initially. And what I'm getting at is the recruiting is maybe holding them back to where they could be a lot better at this point. And I just, I'm just i shocked that you this is a UTEP team losing to Florida International. This is a bad Florida International team right here, Robert. It's not like they're a really strong team and a contender at a conference, you say? Just like last year, for example, the excuse that we didn't have any NIL dollars. This year, we have the money. So he has no excuses for this. Paying Zip Powell 50000 paying Solomon 50000 paying Hardy, wherever he's getting paid, <laughs> and we're not getting nothing. It's just embarrassing. And I'm just lost to lost for words when it comes to this. Well, I let you guys go, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. A line ringing in right here on this program now on five five zero five six zero zero nine. I appreciate the phone call there, Robert. Good stuff. Let's keep it moving. JJ Minor fan is next up on the program now on five five zero five six zero zero nine. JJ, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm I'm shocked. I I have no, I I don't know what to say. Uh, honestly, it's. Player development, right? there's some talent there. It's player development. Golden is not getting the, 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 I don't, I don't, the development from the players at this point in time. Uh, I don't see how center to to to, be, to keep keep them around. It keeps on going this way. I'm just shocked and I'm upset. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I I hear you. I hear you, JJ. In fact, I don't know what we can expect moving forward with this team, right? Because the urgency is there from the freshmen. So if you're if you want to think glass half full, and it's hard to find the positives, right, JJ? At this point right here, it's hard to call this team a contender at a conference. You say yes, they're competitive, but there's very there's a big difference between being a contender and being competitive across conference. You say, and I want to make that very clear. And on the flips, and, and you know, with all of this, right? Right here also comes into the question of well then what's ahead for the future what are they going to play for in the future how are you going to get excited the only thing I think that uh, UTEP fans can get extremely excited about has to be the fact that they've got freshmen who look really promising but then you start getting concerned well what if these freshmen get poached what if somebody out of the Big 12 comes and snatches David Terrell and throws all the money at him even though his family and he's got ties to the school of UTEP Tap and you know the university here. Uh, I'd be concerned for that. So even when you get excited about the young talent, you also think in the back of your head uh, here, JJ. Well, are you going to keep him moving forward? Is this guy going to even stay on the roster here in a couple years? That's scary. Now that's a scary thought. I didn't think about that. That is a scary thought. And I'm going to leave you guys alone because I am just shocked. I'm going to go back. I'm going to watch YouTube. Watch the 1992 game. I'm going to try and get happy. <laughs> hey, good stuff, JJ. Hey, Zay, what's your UTEP happy place? Like, what do you do to make yourself uh, happy about UTEP again? Like, uh, JJ just said he goes back and watches the 1992 <laughs> uh, UTEP uh, NCAA um, you know, tournament run. 
What do you do? What What do you do as far as uh, getting yourself happy again about UTEP? You know, I'll go into a in, into a delusional space and I'll be like, "Oh well, FIU beat New Mexico State, so you know they're a good team." <laughs> That's that's usually what I do. <laughs> oh man, Alberto, do you have any good ones? Do you have any? What what makes you happy as a UTEP fan? Like if when you ha- when you need to pick me up, probably that conference championship over uh, over Rice, I believe it was in two thousand. Okay, man. But, uh, so you're really throwing it back. So you're going yeah. football and really throwing it back, huh? Yeah. yeah uh, uh, and that's even a share of a conference championship too. Yeah. So ugh, yikes. Okay. Well, I hear you. Um, let's keep it moving. Nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. That's our telephone number. Six hundred ESPN El Paso on X or Twitter, and then six hundred ESPN El Paso dot com. Diego Mendoza, our pal, he sends us this from El Paso Matters. Absolutely horrendous loss, but emblematic of this team and this season. Good one minute, a complete mess the next. Hate to say it, but I think three seasons might be enough for Golding. I mean, guys, we've had a lot of uh, golden hate right now. This is coming in from uh, this is coming in from Aaron Peterson. Oh, I already read this one. Eric sends us this one. Fire Joe Golding. Enough is enough. Nine one five Sun City Caper. Joe Golding has done a horrible job coaching. Absolutely bleeped the bed coaching this team tonight. Uh, Herman Flores uh, chimes in as well. He's disappointed. Antflow 22, sorry, but Joe Golding is not the guy. Felipe Candelaria Jr., this team is just undisciplined. Uh, this is from Mike Cuviello. I was watching earlier and then watched a movie. <laughs> we have issues. ADRC, well, they stopped guarding because he took out the players that had been playing well and put in the veterans who had played like crap all year. Jim Center needs to let him go. This is coming in from OF at OF70719. Horrible loss. Joe Golding going with Tay Hardy and Zid Powell down the stretch. Lost them the game. Two turnover-prone guards in crunch time. Uh, this is coming in from David Tr- Corral Jr. With all due respect, Coach Golding, it's time to step aside. You've stated the obvious explanations for all your losses, but don't really offer viable solutions. As a lifelong minor fan, I am sorely disappointed yet again over another inexcusable loss. Uh, this is coming in from King Eric. Safe to say this is lower than rock bottom. I mean, losing to the worst team in conference play is beyond embarrassing. I'm out on this team now. Uh, this is coming in from Trey Chauvin. Joe Golding might be the worst coach UTEP has ever had. A horrible game manager and recruiter. Please fire him, Jim, after this horrible season. Man. Uh, OF, again, two senior turnover pro guards isn't the answer. Okay? So he's talking about Hardy and Powell, I guess. It's time for Trey Horton, David Terrell, and Elijah Jones to get the major minutes since they appear to be the future. Enough of Hardy and Powell. Perimeter defense is bad at, uh, by all of the players. Um, this is coming in from Jimbo. Duh, you think, Joe, in response to uh, Joe Golding talking about how it hurts. They had great prep. They built a 16-point lead, and they start guarding on the other end. Turnovers cost them the game. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was coming in from Jimbo there on the response from Joe Golding. Let's go to Hunter, our good pal. Maybe he can help figure things out, or maybe he can at least tell us if he's done on the team. Hunter, good evening, man. What's going on? What's going on, guys? You guys watching the uh, streaming playoff game right now? Yes, I am on my phone because we don't have it on our actual TV. So I am watching it. It looks like a frozen, uh, you know, environment. What would you? Where would you rather be there or a UTEP fan right now, Hunter? You know, I think it's less miserable out there. At least I can wear a jacket and a beanie, and and I can help the misery. We can't help what we see here. We just watch a watch the train wreck happen. Yeah, I mean, and then the fact that you can't even call a guaranteed win by 16 points with under nine minutes to go. I mean, that's not a win. I was already packing it in with these guys over here. We were already like, oh, okay, it's over. Like, UTEP's got this in the bag. It's over. Uh, they had they had swagger. They had success up to that point. They were dunking. They were throwing the alley-oop. Otis Frazier slammed it down. And then what happened? They just collapsed in the end. But, you know, and, and Golding said it too, though. He's like, man, we just stopped. We just stopped this and that. Did you notice at what point it stopped? Yeah, it was like the six. Well, they took out Horton and they threw back in Powell. It was like around the six-minute mark. Is that what you're alluding to? Well, his whole game management is just garbage. 
And I mean, I, man, I like the guy. I, I think the only way they can succeed is if he fires his assistant coaches and gets people in there. You know, they get people in there to actually know how to coach. You know, he can motivate, there's no doubt, but motivation, like I said the last time, without discipline is nothing. And they have zero discipline. And you can see it because they choose when they get, when they play. You guys talked about that with Zid Powell. He chooses when he's going to show up and when he's not. You know, an effort something you can always control, and they, they choose to, you know, let them not put in their full effort. And I'm sure that happens in practice as well as in games. So... The, the, when it turned around was when he went from four guards and Elijah Jones and just Jones has that foul down low that in my opinion was not a foul. He went straight up, got ball. They called a foul. No big deal. It's one foul, but he has such a short leash on him. He pulls him. And I thought he and played he was, well today. He he played awesome. He was open down low because they had at one point Horton and, and, uh, and Hebb and and Hardy in there and so it spread the defense out and and he was down low and he knows how to score down low and he did score down low and then Golden just goes and and, and that that's when they had their biggest lead if you don't look at their lineup go back and look at the lineup when they had their biggest lead and Golden you know wants to make it sound like some sort of mystery i don't understand how how uh you know we we just stopped you did it take some responsibility you did that you have no clue on on game management, on substitutions, on strategy even, b- because you know what they're going to come bring on defense. There, There is no doubt what they're going to do. And you play right into that as a coach. And you see it happening, and you don't do anything to change it. You just allow it to happen. Okay, well, I, I, real quick, real quick, because I just want to I want to ask you this, because what if the excuse is, and I'm not making the excuse, I'm just saying what if this is, like, because I think you're bringing up a valid point to close out the game. What if the excuse was, well, hey, one of our veteran guys, Kevin Kalu, or Kalu, uh, had four fouls racked it up and didn't play for the rest of the game, so we were a completely different team without him, and we had to really change the game plan up. What would you say to that? Because I would have an answer. I want to hear your answer. They went on their run and got their biggest lead without him. That was by far not the problem. The, the game didn't go downhill once he went out. It went downhill once Golding and his clueless freaking substitutions took place. It has nothing to do with Kalu. It's that guy running the team, and he's clueless. He has no idea what type of player he wants to bring in. And then when he brings in these, this random assortment of players, he has no idea how to coach them. And he doesn't put them in positions to be successful. That's his entire existence. He will not be successful without a good assistant coach that keeps him in his place because he's clueless with game management. You, this is 100% on him. It's, it's allowing an undisciplined team to go out there and be undisciplined for the last eight minutes of the game. And it's in you putting the wrong people in at the wrong times. Why does he have such a short leash on Jones? He could have scored. I guarantee you if he'd have left him in, He'd have gotten at least another four points because the middle would have been open. And then what a genius move. Hey, Trey Horton's having a career day. Let's sit him down after that last three-pointer and not see him again. Genius. You know, hey, hey, uh, Zip Powell, he either shows up or doesn't. You know, and if it's one of the games he shows up, yeah, absolutely, leave him in there. But this was not one that he did. But that's who he chooses to have? You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's 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 bad coaching, and I'm I'm not done with the team because I support the players, but I, I think I'm done with Golding. I've seen enough. This one wow. used to blow a 16 point lead, 100 percent on that coach, and he's clueless. And I, I could I, I never played D1 ball. I could go coach that team better than him, and that's not a hyperbole. Hunter, I hear you, man, and I appreciate the phone call, man, as always. Uh, I want to go with a little bit more on Elijah Jones. Uh, and H- Hunter said a lot of really good things. Um, he's frustrated like a lot of UTEP fans out there. But, Zay, uh, specifically with Elijah Jones, because we don't talk about him enough, and I think he's des- he deserves a little bit more talk. And I'll even bring you in on this, Alberto, because I can't for the life of me understand why he's not getting more minutes. We talked about it and highlighted it big last week where Calvin Solomon is turning the ball over at a really high rate right Right now offensively and I thought offensively today he hurt you Tep so if you're going to get somebody who's going to hurt you and you're worried about your freshman hurting you 
maybe just throw your freshman in question mark, or I guess you keep in your preseason all conference selection guy in Calvin Solomon and hope that he turns the corner and hope that he gets there, which he hasn't had uh, a lot of success this year. Look, Elijah Jones had a good game, man, and I I I love that play where that Hunter was talking about and he was alluding to. Um, everybody's on the perimeter. And Elijah Jones is all he's doing is flailing his hands. He's like flailing his hands, and he's so lanky that you can see him on the floor pretty nicely. He doesn't set the best screens. I don't like his urgency on the screens offensively, but when he's the only guy in the interior moving around and trying to get the ball, he's kind of like he uses the Kalu approach, but he's a way better offensive player than Kalu. And my point on the Kalu question uh, that I threw out to uh, Hunter was to say that I thought Kalu was zero, guys. Like, I, I was just very disappointed in Kevin Callu in, in today's performance. I just didn't really like him at all. And I, I thought that the four fouls, racking them up as quick as he did, that's a veteran thing. That's a veteran guy right there. And this is the first time in the in the post game that I've heard UTEP head coach Joe Golding hold him accountable for it. And the first time I really can remember. And suddenly he grew up, Zay. I guess 2024 is the year where he grows up. But I knew he was grown up last year. And I was out on Kalu last year, so uh, tell me, talk to me about the bigs, uh, Solomon uh, Jones, and then give me give me some on, of course, Kalu. Well, you know, I think the one thing that I can say about UTEP's the big man is the best lineup UTEP had today was when Otis Frazier was the biggest player on the floor, right? And and that's that's the truth, you know, Elijah Jones. We don't have enough of a sample size. You know, we don't see him long periods of time to say, okay, Elijah Jones is this, that. We really don't know, right? The, the the few times that he is in, I think he plays very well. I think he'll have, you know, a couple of mistakes, but that's to be expected when you're playing a freshman, right? Right. Guys like Calvin Solomon have obviously disappointed. Uh, Jonathan Dos Anjos, who knows when we'll see him again this season and uh, what kind of role he'll play once he comes back from his injury. And then, like you said, Kevin Kalu, it's, it's year three. And we're seeing the same things, if not worse, right? I don't think freshman Kevin Kalu would would go out and get four fouls in the first Good half. Point. You know that that probably doesn't happen. So we just haven't seen the development that that we need to be seeing when it comes to UTEP's big men. Or you know what? Maybe he's polished. But in situations like this on the road, it's not consistent enough. Well, yeah, at his best, sure. You could tell me that Kalu's one of the best perimeter defenders who's a big man in the league. Maybe, maybe. But at the same time, when he, he's got to show it night over night, he just doesn't. I think that that's a problem. The issue to me isn't the backcourt. The issue, I mean, it really isn't. And if you want to point out the veterans, I'm not pointing a fi- I'm pointing fingers at maybe uh, Zid at stretches, Calvin at times, Kalu at times. And then that's about it. I mean, the other veterans, I appreciate. Like Otis Frazier, he gives it his all, right? Like you can you can knock him for what he does uh, at times, you know, turning the ball over. But he he gives a lot of effort. And then you know, Tay Hardy, his heart and soul is on the on the line. Like every game, like he's given it his all every single game. So Alberto, how do we assess the bigs? I mean. Honestly, in my opinion, we have to hold the veterans accountable and, and cut their minutes and give it to the young guys. I think that the the in my opinion, obviously, that the the veterans having uh, horrible minutes uh, with a lot of turnovers, a lot of fouls, uh, and just horrible plus minuses. I think that you know we got to take minutes from them and give them to Elijah Jones and other young guys because I mean, like you guys were saying, we look the, the minors look better when they're small. And the ball's just been flowing better, and they've just been getting more buckets when they just have the smaller guys on. Sure. And Otis Frazier isn't the problem. The, the problem, in my opinion, is Calvin, Kel, uh, Kevin Kalu and Calvin Solomon. They just they they're, they're too old. They're veterans to be playing like that. It's just you can't have it. So you you should you got to take those minutes from them and, and and distribute them to Elijah Jones. I'd rather him get thirty minutes and and, and have a bunch of errors because he's still young than have a, a veteran coming all these errors and and taking minutes from a young guy. Good point. Let's go back to the phone. Sarah's next, 915-505-6009. Full phone lines. Let's burn through them. Leon's after Sarah. Sarah, good evening. What's going on? Hey, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Uh, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, that game was – that was a good game. I'm sorry about the the loss. It was frustrating. It, that it, loss was it, frustrating. It, it, it was frustrating. It was frustrating, but – 
hey, y'all, you, you might be a little disappointed in the veterans, but I, I, I have to say Tay Hardy needs to be on the court. He can't be off the court the last minute of the game. Oh, Sarah, what I mean, was that sub? What happened? I, I didn't understand. I well, well, I, I saw the turnover, the turnover, and he was trying to get the ball inside. You know, and, and, you know, a lot of us feel like, you know, an inside shot, your numbers go up as far as your percentages for making that shot. But I, but I didn't – I never would have thought that somebody who gave that much effort during the whole entire game would be sitting on the bench in the last minute. Yeah. And, and, and I saw – I noticed that he got a whole lot of mess from the coach in the last – well, during the whole game, actually. So he's carrying a lot. He's carrying a lot, but he gonna he's gonna be okay. But I do feel like we, like you said, the the front court we we still need a whole lot from the front court. But I don't think we missed a lot not having Kalu on the court. Now I I I never want to put anybody out there like that. Right, right. I hear you. I don't think we missed a lot not having him on the court. Hey, look, Sarah, um, we we give people at- their flowers. We get we get uh we hold but we hold people accountable. So as we're fair and when Kalu has a good game, we give him some credit, but when he doesn't have a good game, we hold him accountable. So, there you go. Yeah, I agree with that. Um I'm still expecting a whole lot more from Solomon, you know, and I don't I don't want to give up on our veterans just yet. You know, but I think that that hundred percent guy is Hardy. I do see him giving his heart on the court, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be totally. I don't want to be biased. I see Frazier contributing a whole lot, but as far as as far as me seeing Horton play tonight, I'm impressed. I absolutely thought that he should have been on the court. At the end of the game, it's, you know, I, I thought he should have been in there like, all, the entire second half, to be honest with you. Um, I actually, I'm absolutely, totally um, impressed with um, what's the other freshman, Terrell. He, yeah, Terrell. He's I'm, fantastic. I'm impressed with him and his effort. So, you know, but – I'm so disappointed tonight. I don't even know how to express it to you guys. Yeah, I but, hear you, Sarah. You know, but, I think that's how a lot of minor I, fans I, feel. I cannot. I can absolutely not give up on Hardy. Hardy, Hardy. I think it's the heart of this team. Sure, uh, I agree. Better. Hey, look, this is his team, Sarah. This is his team. So he's the guy who came back. He could have left last year. It's his team, and I for that you got to give him credit. So I'm with you on that. Hey, let's. I appreciate the phone call, Sarah. I echo your frustrations, and I appreciate you weighing in on the show. Let's keep things moving. Nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. Next up is Leon here on the, on the program. Nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. Leon, good evening. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, Adrian? How awesome are you guys for continuing this uh, broadcast? And, hey, Adrian, you you pumped. I'm, I'm up before 10 o'clock. You got <laughs> to be excited about that, man. I like it. I like um, it, man. That's good stuff. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, God bless you guys. You guys do a fantastic job, and God bless fans like Sarah. But um, at this point, losing a lead like we did, is one thing, but um, are, are we giving in too much to NIL? And that's the only reason I can see why Zid was in the game. And not taking away from Zid's previous success, but it seems like the game broke down and, and where we're at, th- there is no reason for that to happen. I think Golding would know better, but is he actually giving in? to what NIL would mean. And, and, and let, let's be clear. This is the direction we're going. This is where we're headed. But if a coach needs to make that decision and things are moving in a certain direction, maybe we don't need to go back and, and maybe, like you said, it's on the coaches. When even somebody is making noise, we got to do the right thing. They would have won the game tonight. I don't know what the hell happened. 
I don't expect this from a coach like this. I don't expect it from a program like this. And this is utterly embarrassing. I'm a season ticket holder. There is no reason for us to lose a lead like this. And if it's based off of somebody complaining, sit them on the bench. Let's go with what's working. Ridiculous. Thank you guys so much for what you do. Man, Leon, this is the most hot you've ever – you've called our show since day one, Leon. Day one, like when we were doing this show and no one was listening. And you, you called in and you, you've never been this upset. And uh, wow, wow. Uh, good stuff, Leon. Mic drop. He even hung up. So he didn't want. He did not want to follow up there. Never heard Leon that mad. That's for sure. Uh, okay, so let's talk about this, right? Because this is. I, I let Leon go off, and I let him let him talk, and other people would have cut him off and said, "No, no, no, I don't. I don't subscribe to this conspiracy." I think it's um, fair to ask. How difficult is it for coaches nowadays in D1, like Joe Golding, to navigate NIL with playing time? I think it's a fair question because if this guy over here is making 50K and this guy over here is not making a dime, but this guy over here is making 20000 and you got a late game situation and you paid big bucks for this guy over here to be a difference maker, well, that difference maker that you paid or that you have the NIL allotted to is going to maybe get the preference. Or that's the suggestion that Leon was trying to get at, right? You guys all follow me, right? Am am I on this, correct? Is this what he was saying, correct? Yes, yes. So if Leon is saying this point right here and he's bringing up the NIL and he's asking, does it mess with the time? I'm going to personally say no because I would like to think that this coaching staff has a stronger, um, you know, response toward any of it. And they, they set aside the money. The money was the money, but the money was something that was already agreed upon to start off the year and it has no effect on the season. So I'm going to side with the coaching staff and just think with all the NILs and stuff like that, um, it's a tough enough environment to navigate around to the point where you don't have to necessarily have uh you know uh, a true meddling with that but it's a fair question to ask and zay would you would you disagree with me would you say would you side to leon and think that if a certain player is making a certain amount of money then that could favor his playing time in late game situations it, it depends on the coach right it depends on the coaching staff the ideology they want to play with the philosophy and you know here's the thing we know Zid Powell can score, you know, and we know, you know, other guys like Calvin Solomon have shown, you know, that they, they can get buckets at times, right? So it, it's tough to say. It's tough to say we're not in that locker room. We don't know. And I'll say, you know, it, it probably doesn't hold much, but it could. It could. And we, we just will never know. I'll tell you this, though. It could, and it could have effects with the actual locker room, right? Because players probably talk i mean who knows if we've got listeners on minor talk who are floating out numbers for nil dollars then you can't tell me that people in that locker room are completely clueless as to what others make okay right are are we all here can we all agree on this right yeah are we all good on this yeah definitely so if that's the case if we're all agreeing on this kind of thing right here and we assume that these players know, then that's where also the finger pointing happens, right? And that can't be uh, all fine and dandy for coaching staffs to have to manage that. So for all of this, I'll just say I feel for the coaching staff, but that's why they get paid the big bucks, right? I mean, that's why they get paid what they get paid to manage these things and to navigate things like NIL. And to go back to Hunter's point about coaching staff and the coaching staff that was with them, remember when Joe Golden got here, NIL was very new transfer portal was it was what it was but the nil was very new and so the current coaches that he had back then are the coaches that he has now and maybe he needs a specific coach on his staff in the future who knows what an nil is and knows how to navigate that in best practices i don't know i'm i'm saying this is so foreign territory to me and this is also the wild wild west for me to the point where i just have no clue so i'll just side with the fact that maybe nil maybe we're making a bigger deal of nil than it actually is how do you see it alberto well i think that you know i have a, a couple callers back you know you had a caller you asked a caller what he thought about you know the possibility of of younger guys getting poached and he said he didn't even think about that and i think that that's one of the 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 many risks that utep 
or the many risks that NIL poses to UTEP because not only can their younger guys get poached by bigger institutions by the money that they have and that UTEP doesn't or just isn't willing to give up to these younger guys – we're a power. We're a middle middle major school, and they 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 uh, play pretty big schools, and, and and so when guys are are putting up quality time, got quality minutes, they, they're going to draw the attention of quality schools and the money that comes with it. And if UTEP isn't willing to compete, their players are going to leave. So that's where I see the the problem. And if UTEP's not able to adapt, that's the other problem. The other problem is the difficulties of coaching now in in the NCAA is that you're now like the the GM of a, of a pretty much you're the GM, the head coach, the CEO, the CF. You're you're in charge of so much so many things, and so. Yeah, you have to keep in mind who's making what, but I think, in my opinion, in just a competitive sense, you should play the guys that are playing the best for you. You know, in a competitive sense, you want you play to win the game. So you ride the guys who haven't been making mistakes. It doesn't matter who's making what. At the, all that matters at the end of the day is what that you get the W. And at the end of, and today you didn't do that, and and those guys still have that money. But you don't have that, that, that W, so... Good point. Yeah, it's another thing. Hey, <laughs> NIL does not equal wins and losses. It just equals, we're going to get you here to UTEP, or this is our agreement, so you'll stay at UTEP. Let's move back to the phone lines. Johnny's next on the phone lines, 915-505-6009, if you'd like to weigh in. Johnny, good evening. What's up? Yeah, you guys are doing a, a great job. Although I disagree with this whole NIL discussion. If the idea is trying to get the players back, um, Zipal and... Solomon are gone next year, no matter what. At the end of the day, Golding wants the win, and he's going to put the players on the court who we think he can do that. Now, we can quib with that, and I will, because Powell and Solomon average the top two uh, highest turnovers uh, on the team. Uh, and then when you're talking about game management, why the hell is uh, the big guy in in the first half when he has three fouls? Yeah, they should have taken him out right away, right away, as soon as he got that third one. I've been watching UTEP basketball for 40-plus years. I don't know if I've ever seen a starter with three fouls in the first half who has not been pulled in in, in the bench until the second half. Um, So that's a game management issue. And then people have bought up the Horton. That's another game management issue. But I think what Golding was trying to do was put his experience senior leadership on the floor, and they didn't come through. I, quite frankly, am not surprised. Uh, Solomon is a turnover uh, machine. Powell decides when he wants to play and when he doesn't want to play. Um, but that's what he was trying to do. It doesn't have anything to do with NIL. Um, and I think Golding just was not great at managing today, and it resulted in, in a loss. Very fair. Uh, Johnny, you brought up really good points, and I want to highlight something else that you brought up. Yeah, the NIL stuff, I was just you know giving it light because uh, Leon brought it up, wanted to be respectful of his, his take and at least entertain the possibility, but I agree with you. I don't think it did, and that's why I said it initially. I think it's, you know, the coaching staff had it ra- under wraps early on, and uh, it is what it is. NIL was what it was to just either bring people here initially or to retain the players from last year, like kind of like a Tay Hardy or Calvin Solomon, but regardless, I want to talk about something else you brought up. Zit Powell being uh, prone to turnovers, okay? So I mentioned the turnover rate last week about Calvin Solomon. Of his offensive possessions, 25%, a quarter of his offensive possessions will result in a turnover. That's what the advanced stats are telling us right now. Now, Zit Powell, where does he rank on this, right? Because that's also a real interesting thing, okay? He, right now, on... uh, 100 possessions, okay, per 100 possessions, he is actually turning the ball over 25% as well. Him and Calvin Solomon are turning the ball over at a one quarter or every one, once in every uh, four time that they're going up. They're turning the ball over. The difference with Zid Powell is his assist rate is still high. He still has a almost 28% assist rate. So while he turns the ball over 25% of them, he assists on 28% of the times. So it goes back to our initial discussions about Zid Powell. At times, he looks crisp. At times, he's getting to the basket. At times, he's getting his players involved and assisting on uh, plays that end up, uh, you know, turning into buckets. But then on other possessions, he's turning the ball over, lacks urgency, and disappears. So for Zid Powell, the biggest thing that you want from him 
one of the guys that you made your marquee players this year is you want him to be more consistent, game in, game out. And when he has those 30-plus point performances like he did against Wyoming, I'll still I'll still talk about that one until I'm blue in the face. When he has those, then he could take over games. But when he's uh, you know passive, he gets excited about one play and then takes other possessions off, then that's when he struggles. And I think what we've seen as of late is, is a struggling Zid Powell. I didn't like his game against Chicago State, didn't like his game against New Mexico State, didn't think he played particularly well against Seattle at home as well. So we're talking about four straight performances for Zid Powell that didn't look great. And so uh, going into Middle Tennessee, a home, uh, two home games this week, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky, I'm expecting a lot more from Zid Powell. So there you go. A lot to mention on, on Twitter X. Let's go through it. Tristan Pence, friend of the program, he sends us this. The Miners are the incompetent coaching staff, had a week to prepare for this game, and had 25 turnovers. That pretty much sums things up. The wrong personnel were in the game in the final five minutes. The Miners stopped attacking in the press, and they played not to lose. Poor recruiting has doomed this season. The lack of an experienced point guard is killing the team. The poor defense is really disappointing and inexcusable. Golding has taken the UTEP men's basketball program down a couple notches, and that is not acceptable. Hashtag minor talk. Pick, at, or pick my axe 915. I also worry about the young guys with potential transfers. At, or, um, he says, I also worry about the young guys potentially transferring out. Terrell especially. We may have Jones for a while considering he used up a transfer. Hashtag minor talk. Zay, I'll say this, right? Because I've heard this a couple times by different minor fans, right? And I think this needs to be said. So everybody's kind of highlighting the two-time transfer thing. Oh, okay, so if somebody transferred here initially... Chances are they won't transfer again. Uh, Don't necessarily knock that, right? Because if things aren't right in a certain place, and if you transferred once already, and that second time that you transfer, if you really have to sit out a year, I think teams, what I'm getting at is I think teams are either going to A, be willing to risk getting that second time transfer and try to appeal for a, a waiver or B uh, players might just transfer anyways. If they, if they have to sit out a year, so be it. They might just transfer anyways. And the transfer portal will, will continue to be very volatile. No matter if a player has already transferred once before. I thought two time transfers were eliminated or was it just for this year? See, that's my other thing. It's very confusing because Baylor Hebb is eligible and he's a two time transfer. He was supposed to sit out this entire season and a NCAA or not an NCAA ruling, a Supreme Court ruling, which is much, much higher, holds much more weight in, of course, a court of law, has ruled that these two time transfers can be immediately eligible and the NCAA is not expected to fight this, um, I guess like this injunction by the Supreme Court here uh, throughout the rest of the season. So you're right. Those two-time transfers were immediately eligible this past year. So I'll say this. To me, the two-time transfer rule isn't really a deal. Like, let's talk about in May if it in- ends up being the case. But regardless if a guy is transferred once or five times like Keontae Kennedy, I don't care. I think that the transfer portal will continue to have a ton of players in it. Yeah, because it's, it's so hard to, uh, you know, why does that guy get to play? Why does he get a waiver and my guy doesn't get a waiver? What what what's going on here? It's so it's such a bad, you know. It's it's so hard to enforce, kind of, because you know they're kind of just flipping a coin, say, hey, that guy can play, but that guy can't play, and you know you're gonna have tons of schools and coaches saying, hey, that's not fair, and that's the issue with the two time transfer rule. Exactly, it's subjective, right? I could put together a great waiver for any of these guys and give them a reason why all these guys should be playing. I think it's very subjective, and there's no real rules behind it. So uh, it's just something to note out there for college basketball fans. It doesn't have to be UTEP fans. Um, this is coming from our pal. We talked about day one guys. Leo underscore minor fan is a day one guy as well. I'm late to the party. I just finished the game. Anyone else dizzy? That press frustrated me, and I'm only watching the game. Huge mistake by not playing Trey Horton at the end of the second half by Golding. Could have been the difference maker. The last two games, they look to have more of an offense. Jones looks a lot quicker. Man, oh man, did they let one get away from them. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming in from... 
pick my Axe 915 again. I do agree with Hunter. Joe Golding needs to make changes to his staff, bring in someone who can recruit and an X's and O's guy, because I doubt UTEP can afford a buyout after buying Dimmel out. Hashtag minor talk. Uh, this is Aaron Peterson again. Okay, He said, with all the Elijah talk going on, it might be time to give all these young guys a much bigger role. He says this, let's see this just once a year. Um, Tay Hardy, Corey Camper, David Terrell, uh, Otis Frazier, and then Jones. Well, we saw that. And actually, Zay, that was a lineup that you really liked, right? It was a smaller lineup approach by UTEP. And I think you can sub in, if you really wanted to, uh, you can sub in maybe somebody like, I don't know, Frazier for uh, Trey Horton. But I think you like those smaller approach lineups by UTEP because it worked today it was working today you know Kevin Calhoun on the floor and you know as as much as it hurts me to say it there was times when Calvin Solon wasn't on that floor and UTEP was better for it right so I think you know obviously you're you need big men still to win games but you know they're, they're not as big as a need as you know as they were 10 years ago Sure, that's a good point. Uh, let's go to this one. This is coming from Atha99. Joe Golding has to go. This is inexcusable. This is loser mentality on every single game. Tonight's game should have been enough of a reason why he has to go. I thought he was going to build UTEP into a winning program. After today, I think he's one of the worst hired coaches. Such a disappointment. Chris Banks, it was good to see our offense get better and the freshmen stepping up, but I'm starting to doubt the veterans. They wouldn't have been a big win. It would have been good win for this team this loss is on the seniors they should have finished the game uh this is coming in from joe chacone our pal unfortunately we are now in the nil era traditional methods of recruiting and keeping players are out the window bad passing missed shots and points off turnovers gave a sub fiu team all it needed to get back in it and eventually get the win. We keep talking about how it's the coach's fault. I don't think it's that. Sloppy play isn't on the coach. It's on the players. He's not the making the bad passes or making the shots. What he needs to go out do is go out there and get a player who is a true scorer like Vince Hunter or Randy Culpepper were and find a true rebounder like Kennedy was and add that to this team. And I honestly believe this team is totally different. I'm not out on Coach Joe Golding. Hashtag there's still hope. Hashtag not jumping off yet. Hashtag the sky's not falling. Hashtag Sal is my pal. Hashtag Zay is on the way. There you go. There you go, Zay. You got a hashtag. Finally got one. Uh, Sal Sal is my pal is on there. And hashtag minor ink crew. I'm not going to read mine. Uh, Joe is completely wrong uh, on this. I completely disagree with Joe Chacon on this. Uh, Anybody want to take a stab at this one before I I jump in? Uh, Anybody want to talk about this one? You want to jump in, Zay? Why is he right or wrong? What do you think? Well, this is what I'll say, right, is UTEP, they do need scores. They need scores badly, and they swing and they miss on a lot of scores this offseason, right? You know, you had guys like, you know, Zach Hicks, who could have been a good wing in in Conference USA. He's playing at Penn State now, but he could have been a good wing. He could have been a good shooter for them. I think, you know, they missed out on guys like Tyrone Williams, who who led the nation in Juco scoring a couple years ago. He ends up going to Old Dominion. So they swing and miss on a lot of guys. And when they finally hit on Zip Powell, they got him to commit. They got him to get here. How has that worked out? It hasn't. So UTEP, they need to reevaluate. You know the way they're using the transfer portal. They, they need to. They need to do something. They need to do something that'll, that'll switch it up because obviously, you know, the philosophy they're using, you know, to get recruiting, it, it hasn't worked. So Joe Chacon, the part that I really disagree on, and I, I hear what you're saying, I agree with what the, most of the things that you're saying there, Zay. The one thing that I really disagree on the Joe Chacon part is sloppy play isn't on the coach, it's on the players. He's not making the bad passes or missing the shots. Well, he's recruiting these players who are making the sloppy plays and missing the bad shots and you know making the bad passes and stuff like that. So it is uh, back to the, the coach. You know, I get it. <laughs> the coaching staff can't go out there and run it. Uh, Earl Boykins, as much as he wants to, can't sub in the game and help the miners out and close out that game for the miners but uh you know what he can do is he can go out and recruit guys who can finish games for them so um yeah i would say the david terrell recruit is looking or the you know yeah the recruit it's looking more and more 
impressive to me. And we, we talk about the best uh, Joe Golding recruits or the best guys uh, to come here from Joe Golding. I would actually start to think about, is David Terrell getting in that conversation? Because his upside is pretty um, impressive to me. And I, I like where he he's headed. I like where he's playing right now. I like how competitive he is. Uh, if I'm thinking about bright spots on this team, I'm starting with David Terrell. I'm talking about Trey Horton. And I'm also talking about Elijah Jones. This is coming in from UTEP Mineto. I don't question UTEP men's basketball or Coach Joe Golding. I'm behind them, 100%. <laughs> uh, Eric Fournier, he checks in. And to think we could have had Chris Jans or Jerome Tang. This team is totally undisciplined and fundamentally unsound. Yikes. Manny David, disappointing loss. I'm not moving or giving up on this team just two games into conference play. I'm also not hating on Golding. I still believe they'll turn the corner and get back on track. Hashtag Minor Talk. Hashtag Go Miners. By the way, way to go Lobos. What happened with the Lobos, eh? Big ranked win over San Diego State in the pit. Wow. Good wow. stuff for the Lobos. Good stuff. Uh, OF. Joe Golding's teams are undisciplined and fundamentally unsound. He has changed the roster, and the same issues remain. Over 50 turnovers in two games against FIU is very telling. He's not the one. Uh, This coming in from Mac 1960 Give yourself all the blame, Joe Golding. He won't be here next year. That's coming in from Mac 1960. Guys, I think we're starting to wind down here on the show, and I think um, you know fans are pretty frustrated on this one. They were real disappointing, uh, disappointed on how this one went. So let's do this. Let's take a quick break here. We'll come back. We'll finish it out with some uh, awards. We got to pay the bills. I know it's not fun to hand out awards during a loss, but we got to uh, do that for our great sponsors like Win Supply. El Paso and Timothy Cantrell. We'll get to those awards here in just a second. We'll also preview what's ahead for the Miners. They've got Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky on deck, and we'll talk more about this UTEP basketball team. If you want to weigh in, a late call 915-505-6009 as Miner Talk continues, presented by the Oscar Adietta Agency. Final segment coming up next here on 600 ESPN El Paso. All right, welcome back. Minor Talk continues. We're presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. Final segment coming up here. Let's get back to the phone lines along with Zay Galindo, Alberto Urreta. I'm Adrian Bradis. Uh, we're presented by the Oscar ID at the agency. Again, we'll get to our hot hand of the game brought to you by Win Supply El Paso and our player of the night brought to you by Timothy Cantrell uh, here in just a second. But first, let's go to Patrick. He's joining us on the phone lines, 915-505-6009. Patrick, what's going on? Not much, not much. I'm... Uh, sorry to hear about our beloved miners, um, hot and cold, cold and hot, you know, not having that consistency, but this is what I'll say. Um, I'll try to say it as quick as I can. I don't know. We'll see. I just know, like, let's say for, say for example, football. Okay. I've always said a mobile quarterback can make a bad play call look good. Okay. Now let's go to basketball. All right. It, to to make sub subpar coaching or subpar moments in coaching to get you through uh, those uh, times during the game, you have to have great guard play. Okay, you have to have you if if you can have two great point guards, that's what you need. And I think Coach Haskins used to talk about great guard play. I don't care. I don't care if we have to go out and recruit a five eight, a five nine guy, that is that is a stellar ball handler, that can penetrate, that can dish. I think that's what we need. We 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 need great guard play. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it with you guys. Uh, I hope it gets figured out because I I like Coach Golding, but. You know, it's uh, it's it's about the bottom line, and we got to get this thing turned around. And I think that's how you do it. And I'll leave it with you guys, and you guys have a great weekend. Hey, you too, Patrick. Appreciate the phone call, Zay. I'll ask you this because uh, Patrick brought up some really interesting points. Do you think David Terrell should be given the keys? Is he the right ball handler that they need? Um, I mean, 
you know, at this point, I don't think, you know, David Terrell is going to be, you know, 20 times better than Zid Powell. Who knows if he'll even be better than Zid Powell as the main ball handler, but he's a freshman, right? Zid Powell, he's, he's a senior. This is his last year of, of eligibility. He has not shown you that he, that he deserves to be that main ball handler. So why not David Terrell? What do you got to lose at this point, right? Maybe, maybe it's too early to start saying that, right? But if we're talking about, you know, a subpar UTEP team maybe in a couple of weeks, and yeah, like that's when you can really start saying, you know, what do you have to lose, you know, to, to put out, you know, your freshman as your main ball handler? Yeah, give the keys to the car. And and maybe see what he could do, right? I mean, just to see a freshman like that, you, you show a lot of commitment to him. That would be the, his perspective, right? Like, hey, these guys are committed to me. This coaching staff wants me here. I'm a freshman. I'm able to grow. And look at how much I played in year one. The flip side of that is, who's to say a big team doesn't come out and say, hey, David Terrell, you want a million dollars? You want to come join our team? Over here, we need a ball handler who has uh, you know, three years of eligibility left with him. Hey, uh, this was mentioned to us off air, and we'll, we'll highlight it right now. Rodney Terry, old friend of ours, um, I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek, guys, uh, he is coaching Texas, and the Longhorns right now are 12-4, and four, and they just came off a bad loss to West Virginia, 76-73. to 73. Longhorn fans are really upset. You know, for all the UTEP fans who are upset right now, the Longhorn fans are probably more upset, and they can actually fire Rodney Terry, right? Zay, I mean, they've got the deep pockets to do it. They have they can do it if they're really upset and really frustrated at the end of the season. Um, I don't expect a midseason firing, anything like that whatsoever. I think the talent is there. They have some pretty good players, but when you watch them, it's like watching the UTEP Rodney Terry teams, right? It's like, yeah, in late game situations, not going to be a lot of adjustments. It's going to be give it to the best players and hope that they score and hope that they can make the right decisions and win the game yeah and you know that's a very different type of frustration than you know say watching you know when I'm watching this UTEP team today right I'm getting frustrated because they lose like this blah 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 when you're watching Rodney Terry UTEP teams you're frustrated because you're like we are so much better than these guys, right? UTEP had so much more talent than a lot of Conference USA teams, yet they were barely, you know, they were barely coming out on top in, in Conference USA pod play. That's what it was called. Yeah. They were playing against the worst <laughs> teams in Conference USA. You know, they had to beat Southern Miss like two times to get to the Conference USA tournament. I mean... Yeah, <sighs> I remember times. this. Rough I remember times. this. Wow, pod play. You're really throwing it back, Zay. Uh, pod play, I love it. Uh, Leo underscore minor fan. I'm still sticking with Joe Golding myself. I did say with Dim- or I did stay with Dana Dimmel much longer than I should have, but Joe Golding is certainly not Dana Dimmel by any stretch of the imagination. Hashtag picks up, hashtag minor talk coming in from Leo underscore minor fan. Okay, guys, uh, let's turn the page. It is Middle Tennessee on Thursday. It is Western Kentucky Saturday. Middle Tennessee is awful right now. They're 0-2 also in Conference USA. This is where UTEP gets their first Conference USA win. It's coming up Thursday. It's at the Haskins Center. I'm holding UTEP to a high standard to do it. Um, Middle Tennessee has an awful offense, right? That's that's one of the things you look at right away. Their offense or they're offensively challenged right now. And then hosting Western Kentucky Saturday, that's the tough game, right? Hilltoppers are 13 and 4, had a nice season so far. They beat teams like Murray State, Bowling Green, uh in the non-conference stretch, they also beat Wright State, a pretty good squad, uh destroyed uh, Cal Baptist as well. They beat Abilene Christian, who the Miners couldn't beat. And they beat Liberty. Liberty, uh, who was supposed to come in and win all of Conference USA. They beat them. They lost to Sam Houston State. And today, they beat Jacksonville State. Uh, we'll go around the table. What do you think? I, I'll call a split this this upcoming week. Uh, Alberto, where are you going for UTEP? What do you think? I say they beat Middle Tennessee, lose to Western Kentucky. Your early predictions going into next week. Unfortunately, I think they drop next both of the next games. Wow. Yeah. Man, that would be awful, Alberto. Man, but it, it's possible. The way that they've been playing, the turnovers are something that are hard to escape right now for UTEP. Yeah, I think the way that they go cold you know, in the, in the last stages of the game, I think the way your veterans turn the ball over, I think that's really going to affect morale. And I think that uh, I know that fans aren't going to come out anymore, or, and they haven't been. 
so it's not much of a home environment. They play uh, pretty bad on the road and, and it might transfer over to home home play. So that's that's one thing. When you start playing really bad and you play uh, road games horribly, it might transfer over to your your home uh, to your home games. Zay, you go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, I'll say split. I'll definitely say split. And um, I think they can beat Middle Tennessee. Obviously, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the Blue Raiders, but um, it'll come down to one thing. You know, when the game is on the line. And let's say your six-year senior just made a big-time mistake. Um, and I'm referring to Tay Hardy, right? He makes a big-time mistake. He misses two free throws against Cal. And um, he leaves him in the game, obviously. He comes down the floor, and uh, he hits a game-winning bucket. Versus today, he makes a mistake. He turns the ball over, and uh, they sub him out for, for Zid Powell. And that, that's, that's probably the most frustrating thing that I, that I saw today. The more I thought about it, I was just like, your most consistent player, I'd say, is Tay Hardy, and and you're not giving him the chance to be on the floor in the final in the final seconds when you need a bucket. That that one that one that one that one got me. That one got me. Sure, yeah, it's going to be a what if, right? And I think uh, the coaching staff, it's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt the team. This weekend's going to be no fun whatsoever for you, Tipman's basketball. But uh, yeah, they've got to turn the page kind of quick. They've got the Thursday game against Middle Tennessee, and let's see how they do in that performance when it's all said and done. Hey, I want to uh, let's go to our players of the game and our hot hand of the game. Let's do that right now. First off, let's start off with our hot hand of the game. This is brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso. Hey, El Paso right now is experiencing these colder temperatures. If you're looking off to fend off that El Paso cold. Cold weather, stay warm with a new furnace from Wind Supply El Paso. They've got great, uh, they've got great furnaces, and actually, right now you could find your nearest dealer online today by visiting the Find a Dealer tab online at windsupplyelpaso.com. Wind Supply El Paso does so much for the community, whether they are a part of nonprofit efforts like they do with the ANA All the Way Foundation, the Aaron Jones Foundation, along with uh, Alvin Jones Jr., or uh, what they do with you. UTEP basketball and with us here on Minor Talk. Wind Supply El Paso is just everywhere. Love what they do and check them out online again. Wind Supply El Paso. Dot com. Hey, our hot hand of the game, it's got to go to Trey Horton. What a performance by Trey Horton in this one. 14 points, 4 for 4 from 3-point range, and 5 for 6 from the floor. Loved his game, loved what he was able to do. So that's why Trey Horton will be our hot hand of the game. Now, player of the game, this is brought to you by Timothy Cantrell Realty. And hey, if you're looking to buy or sell your home here in El Paso, well, look no further. Meet Timothy Cantrell, your trusted real estate agent with over 20 years of experience. If you're ready to take the next step, uh, contact Timothy today. Reach him at 915-204-8441. That number is 915-204-8441. Or check out his Instagram and his social media accounts at Timothy Realtor. Check out the latest listings and check out tips that he's got as well. Timothy Cantrell's selling the dream one property at a time. For this one, we're going David Terrell. I'll do a little spin for you guys here. He had 10 points, 4 for 5 from the floor, 27 minutes. Uh, He did turn the ball over a good amount of times, but... He did contribute with three assists and was uh, me- played meaningful minutes for the Miners. Again, four steals. So, all right, I'll give him the five turnovers because he made up for it with four steals and three assists. So, if you if you go there, you know, he was still plus three on the turnover margin. <laughs> he did have his mistakes, but uh, David Terrell shined today in another performance for him. Let's give it to the freshman. The, the freshman sweeped the awards tonight, and he is the player of the game. Guys, we're turning the page. We're uh, heading over to next week. So until then, we will talk to you out there again. It's Minor Talk. We'll be out at the District West 3233 North Mesa ahead of UTEP Middle Tennessee. So if you're anywhere in the area, come on out and join us. It'll be a lot of fun and we're really looking forward to being out at the District West again. Uh, again, um, we are done here tonight for Minor Talk. We appreciate everything uh, Oscar had yet. The- oh, we hadn't talked women's basketball. Thank you, Alberto. I think that's what you were showing me. Women's basketball. Uh, you guys tell me. The women's drop tonight's game, Florida International. Zay, you give me your thoughts. Alberto, you give it after. You go ahead, Zay. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alberto, for reminding me.
Yeah, you know, I was I was frustrated, right? I'm, I'm watching the game, and I, I was very frustrated, especially with the outcome, you know, them really faltering late in this game because, you know, UTEP, they're coming off back-to-back double-digit wins. They looked really dominant in their win against New Mexico State, as they did against Southern Utah. That's two really dominant wins. And uh, they had me, they, they kind of had me, right? They had me thinking, hey, you know, this team does have talent. And, and they do. They just needed to, to mesh together, get under Keith as well. And uh, there, were, there were times in this game against a good Florida international team that I thought, okay, you know, they, they can win this game. They can get this, you know, within single digits, keep it within single digits, you know, the final five minutes, and they'll have a shot. But it just it, it really faltered at the end. And uh, there's not one thing that I can say that, that, that really stood out to me why they lost that game in the final, you know, quarter. But it was, it was just frustrating to see. Alberto, they were outscored 25-11 to in the fourth quarter, and Florida International won 83-62. Give me your thoughts. No, yeah, uh, it was really hard to watch for, for the minor team here. They competed until, like you said, the third quarter, and, and they just they, they, they couldn't make adjustments, you know. Uh, our, our dearly beloved Cappy, you know, he said, his words not mine, that the FIU ran one play all game and the minors didn't make an adjustment. They would drive into the, the paint kick the ball out to who someone who was open in the perimeter and then they drain a three you know so uh olivia trice number two for them she went five of six from the three just her and then they had uh maya Kone. i think it's Kone, not cone it's maya Kone, uh three of six herself so yeah they, they were brutal they got hot at the end there uh olivia trice i want to say th- at over three over th- like yeah three three over threes came in the in the second half of that game so it was just uh, gut wrenching basketball for for the girls there, and uh, it's a rough stretch. They go to the road. Rough they, stretch and uh, day for the miners in total, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then Had the a girls, few of those. they hit the road. They hit uh, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee next. Those are two Ooh. tough games. So, yeah, it's not getting easier for anybody. No, you're exactly right. Hey, great stuff, guys. Great stuff to Alberto Rata, who you just heard from right there. Great stuff by Zay Galindo, who produced the entire game and delivered minor talk as well. Hey, for everybody out there, we want to give a big shout-out to the Australia at the Agency. One last time, the presenting sponsors of us here on Minor Talk. Check them out for your home, your auto, your life insurance, or your business commercial insurance needs. That's the Oscar Arrieta Agency. Check them out online, OscarArrietaAgency.com. For Zay, Alberto, I'm Adrian. Signing off and saying so long. Good night from us here at the River Oaks Property Schoolyard Sports Studios in 600 ESPN El Paso.